Saturday, Sunday. But, but the long and short of it is, so it, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, you can see 75 or 100 people gather together to pray and believe that their prayers are going to be answered. And you can see the white-haired saints. Some of these ladies, goodness sakes, uh, you know, at 69, I'm, a, I'm like in a junior class here. These are, these are folks who have been down a pipe once or twice. Uh, and, and to watch them pray, to watch them be birthed into tears just out of the connection they have to God. Amen. We Amen. don't get to do that, or at least I don't get to do that as a, as a minister of the Catholic Church very often. So I certainly thought about all my friends here and about this church and uh, how if we changed the name, you all might have thought we were about this revival. It was uh, pretty cool. It goes on for another eight days. Um, and again, it's happened for 130 years. So I, I just want to pray for those some of those ladies, I believe, have been to all 130 of them. <laughs> they keep on praying. So, you know, and a couple of them are like, if you got anything you need, just let us know. So if you all need any prayers, we'll just, I'll send them by way of me to all these ladies that are going to assemble tonight. Because uh, they got to speak directly to God. I mean, yeah. God ain't going to give up on 100 grandmothers. I mean, so it was just a very cool thing to see. Uh, it's just it's humbling to be in a place where the spirit is alive and well and, and, and operating. So I pray for them and for Father Mitch. And he's going to have uh, deacons now preach for the rest of the week on, on, the, on the gospel reading. So I will pray for all of them. Pray for Amen. 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 see us anywhere else the diversity of this room and just like brother pike's prayer i mean you know we i know that we all have political disagreements but yet we all love jesus Amen. you know right. that that kind of puts that all that's aside right. that's you know? exactly and right that, Amen. to me is how i want to live my life outside these doors kind of put my opinions aside i think the older i get the more i realize that i do become a noisy gong in my thinking you know mm -hmm. Just put it aside. You do not have all the, the right answers. And you are not 100% right in your thinking. You know, listen to other people instead of always thinking you got to get your side in. You know, that's that's speaking to me. I know we got some first timers. Have you been, been here before? A long time ago, a long like a year ago. But mm -hmm. stay so, up. Tell us a little bit. Sir. Okay. Uh, my name is Cole. Uh, I know a couple of your faces in here. To work for Congressman Massey this year, last year. Wayne had invited me the first time. Saw Joe at the post office. He got me to come back. So uh, I'm, glad that. I'm, glad I'm, glad that. I'm, uh, I'm a children's pastor at a local church here and had four wonderful salvations that we've really been working on, me and my wife, uh -huh. on Sunday. Amen. So um, life's been really good. I got a baby on the way coming in uh, late December. So life is going for me. And I really enjoy it. And I'm I'm glad to be around gentlemen and guys like you. Not many guys like 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 you all in this room in the world. So I'm glad to surround myself with guys like you guys. Thank you. Amen. John's a first time, long time. So welcome back. Amen, John. Thank you for coming. And Lachlan's here. Somewhere. Where are you, Lachlan? Thank you, Lachlan. Do we have any, any birthdays? Yeah. Roger. Yesterday. Awesome. Oh, okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. Anyone Which else? number, Roger? Uh, it's either 47 or 74. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forgive me, Lord, for lying. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to ask, Roger. <laughs> you look good. Thank Anybody you. else? about anniversaries. How about we do pledge? Nope. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy birthday, Roger.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Roger. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad it is, and be glad it is. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad it is. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Mm. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have, have them punished. And I tried to force them uh, to, uh, uh, to blaspheme. I was so uh, obsessed with uh, persecuting them that I, that I even uh, hunted them down uh, in foreign cities. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. About noon... King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. 
I have appeared to you to appoint you a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them. <coughs> Amen. So then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. He goes to those of Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent, turn to God, and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. Mm-hmm. But God had helped me in this very day. So I stand here and testify to small and very hard. I'm saying nothing beyond what the prophets and those who said in that. Let the Messiah who suffer and ask the first to rise from the dead to bring the message of life to his own people and to the Gentiles. Right. At this point, Testus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. <laughs> Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Justice mm-hmm. Paul replied. What I'm saying is true and reasonable. There you go. The king is familiar with these things, and I speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then uh, Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade persuade me to be a Christian? <laughs> Paul replied, short time or long, I pray to God that only you, but all who are not only the you, but all who are listening to me today, may become what I am, except for these chains. Amen. He rose and with him the governor and Bernice and those sitting with them. After they left the room, they began saying to one another, this man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. The word of God. I think it's kind of interesting what we're talking about today. Our political and Christian views. Paul, who was persecuting the Christians because he thought he was doing it for God, got convicted by God that what he was doing was not of God. I think that's kind of what we're talking about here. Just that's right. be careful with your opinion. It might not, it might not be right. Mm-hmm. All right. I think we have one prayer mat today for Wally. Mark? Uh, he, he's a friend of mine that's re- recovered from shingles and I, I get to complicate somewhat is he's got a trip scheduled starting uh, next Monday to Ireland he's oh, taking yeah. his daughter there uh, just kind of trace her fa- family roots and have a nice time her, his daughter just graduated from you know, Notre Dame a, a, a Academy uh, this year so hopefully he recovers quickly from the shingles and they can have a nice trip <laughs> His wife passed away last year, so he's had a rough, rough few months. Uh, prayer that he can give you. Steve. So, so last week I asked you all to keep a prayer up. Ashley. Ashley's the young 38 year old woman who was just in the last couple of weeks uh, diagnosed with MS. So I, I see her every week. So this week she came to see me. Um, I love her. Her, her she lost most of the vision in her left eye now. Um, she has a hard time keeping balance. And she tends to fall a lot to the left side. Um, she's uh, feeling kind of alone and lonely. She's worried about her children. I had to ban her off the internet because she kept seeing all this crazy stuff that happens to NS patients. Uh, she's 38 years old and she's always tried to do the right thing. And right now, she's got a little joke thing going on. It's like every week she gets just another layer of stuff. And uh, she's 
she, she, she wants to believe and she wants to be okay. <coughs> Information, you know, if, if most of your day is going from one doctor's office to another, um, that's, that's gotta be pretty sad. So I, I just, I guess I'm a little sensitive with my daughter just coming out of the hospital. God love her, she's fine, but you know, she's 38 years old. She had two kids. She tried to raise them right. This really has been heavy on my heart. So we need prayers for her and prayers for the rest of us that are blessed to probably walk these last, uh, uh, probably, I don't know much about medical stuff, but I suspect she won't be here next month at this time. So we just need to pray for her and her family and all of us that are kind of touched by her. Jim, would you take these prayers? Lord, we ask that you, uh, that you bless this family all those who are, who are part of this lady's journey. Help her to come to an understanding of um, the importance of her life upon those who love her and care for her. And for those who do care for her, that they have the strength and the courage and the abilities to, to know what to say and how to lift her up. We ask all of this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes. Here at the Fort Mitchell Prayer Breakfast, Men's Prayer Breakfast, every Thursday morning at 6.30. Great place to come and worship with some wonderful men since 1976. I've been coming and uh, I'm always thrilled to be here. Right in the heart of Fort Mitchell and Christian Men's Prayer Breakfast in the basement every uh hi fellas morning heading out now to speak to uh kathy wolf's group at uh um behind the the uh behind the um, Home Depot store in Florence. And I'm supposed to be there at 7, 7.30, so I've got to, got to get a move on. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition of godly principles. Thanks to all the men at the men's prayer breakfast there at Fort Mitchell every Thursday morning at 6.30. Come and join them. A great breakfast and a great time worshiping the Lord and reading the word of the Lord. John Stevenson here, former superintendent of education, Commonwealth of Kentucky. The last elected one, 859-750-0000. If you have any questions or join us on Facebook under John Stevenson, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N, Dr. John Stevenson. Thank you very much or check us out on YouTube. We can see a lot of our shows out there and more of them to come as we get them loaded up on YouTube to Dr. John A. Stevenson Travels with the Stevensons and Miss June Guyman Stevenson, the smartest move I ever made. <laughs>